Hello and welcome back to Off The Crossbar Euro 2020. This is our knockout stage preview with myself, Regan Walsh, and as ever, my co-presenter, Brett. It's finally the knockout stages. How excited are you now for this? Oh, I'll, I'll get there on Saturday, trust me. <laughs> like I need these few days to calm down from what the group stages offered. Yes, uh, especially after the action on Wednesday evening. So we are starting to look ahead as we edge closer towards the final but we still have a good few rounds to go before we get there uh, we have two games on saturday two on sunday two on monday and two on tuesday uh, the first game on each day takes place at five o'clock with the second game on each day taking place at eight o'clock obviously those times are british summertime so check your local listings for that uh, We'll start off with the very first game, Wales versus Denmark at the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam. Side bit of news for Wales fans is that they won't be able to travel to this game due to uh, travel restrictions from the United Kingdom to Amsterdam. But the Danish will have fans there. Um, it's going to be a really good game. I've got a feeling. I know I feel like I'm going to say this for every game. But well, yeah. well, no, we might, but I feel like this is one of the more intriguing ones. Because mm. they're both quite similar in terms of how yeah. the tournaments of Wales have obviously been quite organised and they yeah. relied a lot on their attack to try and deliver for them. Like Bale steps up, Dan James has been someone who has delivered in terms of pace. Yeah, key for more as well with the goals. Yeah, and Denmark are just loved by everyone now. Yeah, absolutely true warriors uh, heading into this game. Um, it's going to be very close, I've got a feeling. I mean, the last time these two sides met was back in November of 2018, with Denmark winning 2-1 in a Nations League match. And each of the last three competitive meetings, Denmark have won as well with a, uh, in a run stretching back to June 1999. Though so this is the first meeting between the two sides at a major tournament. So obviously all previous stuff there is... Uh, out of context but looking at like you said Wales we obviously know the threats of Bale, Dan James, um, Kiefer Moore as well who all have had really good tournaments for Robert Page's side and then Denmark Yusuf Paulson's goals have helped them Pierre Hoiberg is the top assister in the tournament so far so it's going to be a very close game and I don't think I can call a winner. No, you can't. Like, well, it depends if Wales can turn up. They're not going to have any fans there to back up. So, yeah, it's all on it. With Denmark, they will. But I don't think they'll have a good number, considering yeah. the distance between the two countries. And I, I think Denmark have the better quality. Yeah. Obviously, with their, for obvious reasons, missing uh, Christian Eriksen, but even without him, they do have that. Better, like you say, better quality. I mean, I'm still expecting Robert Scott Olsen and Jonas Vind to show us a bit more in this tournament so far. Paulson's done good. Uh, Andreas Christensen done uh, really well at the defence. And then uh, the emergence of Mikhail Damsgaard, a young 20 year old from Sampdoria. He's done really well in this tournament for the Danish. And I expect him to have another good game here. Yeah. It seems like they have a sort of prodigy. Yeah. Uh, obviously, big miss for Wales will be uh, Ethan Ampadu, who will miss the game after he was... I, I don't think it'll be a big miss, let's just say. Well, yeah, it's still a miss, though, not having uh, all 23 players that you would have available because he would uh, be in that team. But it's going to be interesting to see who they do bring in to work alongside uh Aaron Ramsey and co. in that midfield. Uh, the second game sees Italy take on Austria from Wembley Stadium. Italy, this tournament, have been absolutely deadly. De deadly? They've not conceded. And they have scored one of the... I don't think they've scored the most, but they've been one of the more clinical teams so far in this uh, tournament. Yeah, the they've Netherlands been, been the, have scored been, the most. They've been the best so far yeah. of anyone. Like in every position, they've done really well. Maybe because, like you said, it was an easy group. But I think because us in 
British media, we don't really pay attention to how Italy have done. Where, if you look at the stretch runs of Mancini, they're now 30 games unbeaten. They just set up rock solidly. I mean, the first two games, we said it, they played without Marco Verratti. And what Jorginho did in that midfield uh, was incredible this tournament so far. And they've just looked rock solid. Yeah, completely agree. It's going to take a lot to beat them. Yeah. But we want to see them against a quality opposition. Mm. Austria, they're not... I think they're better than what they face so far. Yeah, but it's I mean, not a massive step up, is it? Yeah, I mean, the, the Austria's best opposition they faced, obviously, in their group was the Netherlands, and they lost that game. Admittedly, they were without Marco Arnautovic, but right. I don't even think he would have done that much difference but, in that game. But that he feels like he is sort of key because yeah. he's the only other player that does something other than Alaba. Yeah, because Alaba's job, right, is literally. Pick, pick the ball up at centre back, run with it to left back, one two with someone else, and then he's now playing an attacking mid, and then give it well one two with a striker, and then he's buying up front and actually trying to make something. Mm-hmm. But I feel this game he's going to have to be much more defensive because how Locatelli has been playing these uh, balls forward towards uh, Insigne on the left hand side, or when Spinazzola has gone past Insigne on that left. I think Alaba is going to have to be a lot more defensive in this game and that's why I think uh, Italy will outshine them because without the attacking threat of David Alaba, Austria really do struggle. Yeah, it's also the like, pressure they put on teams. Yeah. They're, they're just straight on anyone. They don't give anyone time to do anything. Yeah, well, I think this could be a really uh, easy game for the Italians at uh, Wembley. Right, on to Sunday's fixtures now, and starting off at the Pushkas Arena in Budapest as the Netherlands take on the Czech Republic. Netherlands uh, finished top of their group, scoring eight goals, uh, the most in the group stages, whilst the Czech Republic obviously finished third in the group with England. Denzel Dumfries has been the standout player, obviously, for uh, the Netherlands in this tournament so far, you got to say. For me, yes. I think it's nice to see Memphis stepping up as well, but Denzel Dumfries has so far been key. Uh, their yeah. wing-backs are what seems to drive their attack because they just let them bomb forward. Yeah, and then also uh, Genie Wijnaldum has been really good it's, as well. That was the one I meant. Uh, Genie Wijnaldum has been their key. Yeah, like the link-up him and Memphis have had this tournament has been really good. Uh, the Czechs, on the other hand... Haven't really offered much this tournament so far. I mean, they've, they've been solid enough. Yeah, I would but, say. I still I think, think I still think they could pose a threat. I think this Dutch team has enough on them to. Uh, yeah, look, I would agree. Get past them. I would agree that the Netherlands probably should just have enough, mm. but I wouldn't go against the Czechs. Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at uh, their game against England the other day, Patrick Schick was really quiet. Well, we made them quiet. Yeah. We bored them to death. I mean, he bored everyone to death. Uh, that game did. So, I think it's going to be uh, quite easy. I I could be easy for the Dutch. But, again, it's, you're never too certain with uh, De Boer's sides. It's interesting that it's in Budapest as well. Mm. Not a stadium neither of them have played in. They'll get yeah. the full crowd. It would just be interesting to see who has more sets of fans. At it. They're probably equal. But... Yeah, and you don't know how many neutrals are going to be there. Yeah, who knows. Mm. Uh, the second game on Sunday is probably the biggest game so far as Belgium take on Portugal from the Estadio Olimpico de la Cartagena in Seville. Belgium, obviously, have been absolutely phenomenal in their group, only conceded once, winning all three of their games, and Portugal uh, heavily relied on Cristiano Ronaldo this tournament, as he is the t- tournament's top goal scorer, scoring five of Portugal's seven goals. This is going to be a really, really, really tasty game. It's nice to see the Sunday night drama still lives on even during the Euros. 
<laughs> oh, th this this has the ingredients to be a spicy affair. Yeah. Like, think of the think of all the players involved in this: De Bruyne, Ronaldo, uh, Lukaku. Lukaku. Not saying Bruno. <laughs> no, because he hasn't showed up in this He's tournament. Been shit. <laughs> Even I'll admit it, he's been non-apparent in this tournament so far. But, I mean, you never know. He could turn the cogs in this uh, knockout stage now and become the Bruno that we've known over the last 18 months, 24 months at Manchester United. I think he's just annoyed that he was sat on the bench and not being able to take all those penalties. <laughs> but, yeah, this game really does have everything and anything mm. that you could ask for in a knockout stage game. It's going to be... Thoroughly entertaining from uh, minute one to minute ninety, and I don't, I, I definitely can't call a winner in this game. No, it depends who's on it on the day. Like Ronaldo can happily carry them over the line, as could yeah. Kevin De Bruyne up a Belgium. <laughs> exactly, both can put on an absolute masterclass and help their teams massively. Right on to Monday's fixtures now, and we start off with Croatia versus Spain from Copenhagen. Both teams haven't been that impressive in the tournament so far, have they? No, I feel like Croatia sort of have a little bit, just a little bit more. Because they, they came out in the second half against the Czech Republic, so it looked like the Croatia we expected. And then the Scotland game seemed pretty easy for them. Yeah. Spain and the Red have only seen their best in one game, and that was against a team that couldn't be lost. And were match fixing, pretty sure. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a real test for Spain because I don't see him dominating possession as much as they did in their group stage games. I think they will. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Croatia were a bit more sat back, let them do their thing. Because let's be, Luka Modric will know exactly how to play against this sort of style of football. He does it on a weekly basis. Yeah, well, he's a part of it on a weekly basis. If that's what you want to call Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> I think Croatia would have preferred this. That, either way, like Spain or Sweden, which they could have played, I don't think they'd have cared. Yeah. Like they were both are very winnable. Yeah. Uh, then the later game on uh, Monday evening sees France and Switzerland travel to the National Arena in Bucharest uh, for a tie, I think you got to say, France are going to... I think they're going to absolutely smash Switzerland. Oh, don't say smash. Do you remember the last time they played? No. Have you, we've, we've discussed it in this tournament once already. They played in the group stage of the World Cup, but it was the worst game I think I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, but we all know knockout tournament France are entertaining and score but, goals. You'd hope so. For us, for our enjoyment levels of this tournament that this better be good. Mm. They should they should win. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't see where Switzerland are going to be able to break down this France team. But, and this, unless this is where Jardim Shakiri just goes full boss mode. I, I don't think he is, though. He might have a good game and might help him get a move this summer. It, he'll think but... that one goal against Turkey wasn't good enough, so he'll <laughs> just... Yeah, potentially, but I think... France have too much class and they should uh, quite easily beat Switzerland. And now on to Tuesday, five o'clock. This will be happening. It'll be a quiet Wem game, really, isn't it? Wembley Stadium, England, Germany. Oh boy. <sighs> it, it is written in the stars. 25 years on from Euro 96 and that semi final. We remeet at Wembley. Gareth Southgate, that's the manager. We you can't are write seeking... that shit. <laughs> well, I mean, you can. You can, but it's, yeah, what are the chances of it actually happening? Well, that's the thing. Um, England haven't been the most entertaining sides in terms of scoring, only scored twice in their group stages. Harry Kane's been non apparent in this tournament so far. Uh, however, it will be interesting to see what lineup he does go with. 
does Harry Maguire and John Stone start in defence, or does he bring back Tyron Mings? How does he do the fullbacks? I uh, think Mason Mount and Ben Chilwell are out of quarantine. I think if it's, England had played on Monday, they would have been out of the game. It's, I believe, either the day the quarantine ends or the day after the quarantine ends. So, yeah. obviously, the question of fitness would be brought up, but I think they'd be training and keeping the fitness levels up anyway, so it wouldn't matter too much. But Chilwell has applied anyway. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, but yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what lineup uh, happens uh, for Gareth Southgate. Does Bakaya Saka uh, get another start because he played really well? I thought you well said Bakaya. <laughs> I said Bakayo. You said it now. Whatever. Um, Grealish, obviously, he played really well in that last game. Does he get a nod? It's there's a lot of questions in terms of that England lineup. Um, Compared to Germany's lineup, because we all know theirs is going to be uh, pretty much the same. Just really a question of fitness from their game. Uh, if is Thomas Muller fit enough to start uh, the full if ninety? If we're talking on our lineup, because mm. Germany have been playing wing backs. Yeah, is that something that Southgate's going to want to match? He'll say, oh, top team, we're going to have to play defensive in the midfield. Mm. That's just going to be his all line. I don't think Grealish starts. Yeah. It's going to be very, very uh, questionable and uh, exciting to watch. And then the final set of group stage, uh, not group stage, round of 16 games on is Sweden versus Ukraine from Hamden Park in Glasgow. Um. Sweden, like we said in our uh, review of them in the group stages, they've done quite well, look solid, but they just need to kick on to that second gear now uh, where Ukraine, they've had very up and down tournament. I mean, Yarmolenko and Yuremchuk have been involved quite a lot. Uh, but at the same time... So, some will say they're very fortunate to be here given that their only win was against North Macedonia. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's the whole blame your effort for that for how they worked out their system of the best third place team going through. Uh, but yeah, this game I think is going to be very similar to Wales Denmark. Both teams very similar on paper, and I don't think you can really give out a clear winner. It sort of shows their quality on the day. Yeah, which both teams have it, Sweden have Isak. Ukraine have yeah. your own show. Yeah, so definitely could go down to the wire. Uh, right, that is all the preview done. Um, Wait, very don't exciting make, times. Don't make me make any predictions on this. Not yet. No. I'm not ready. No, God, no. Uh, unless you want to do it day by day. That's what I believe we were doing. Yes. So maybe we could, pre- make... we could probably predict the first two. Okay. Um, Wales, Denmark, how do you see this going then? All oh, Denmark, are we? Okay. And Italy, Austria? Did he my answer? No. Nope. Well, <laughs> he would have helped. But... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to go Denmark and Italy to go through to the uh, quarterfinals. I'm not even going to try and work out who they'd play in the quarterfinals or read into it because it's extremely complicated as well as well I, I've, I've done the full look but I, I, I don't want to look ahead really but I've yes. done it because I'm stupid mm-hmm. and I like to believe but I believe the will, the winner of Wales Denmark plays the winner of Netherlands Czech Republic uh, well I'm going to take your word into it and, uh, but like I and said if I'm, after... right, well, if I'm right Italy Austria winners that plays Belgium Portugal what does that yes oof uh, give me, give me would, Italy against any of those things. Yeah, that would take place in Munich, whilst the winner of Wales, Denmark against the winner of Netherlands, Czech Republic, takes place in Baku. Mm. Wales will want to win that because they've had the experience playing in Baku. Yeah. And again, I think it could be a very close game if Wales were to get through against the Netherlands as well. Mm, maybe. Who knows? Yeah, but let's not look too far ahead to the future, apart from looking forward to this weekend's games as Wales take on Denmark. 
like I said, from five o'clock in the Johan Cruyff Arena uh, in Amsterdam on BBC One if you're in the United Kingdom. So until uh, Sunday when we'll wrap up Wales, Denmark, Italy, Austria and look a bit more into the Netherlands, Czech Republic and Belgium, Portugal. It's goodbye from me and goodbye from Brad. See ya. And we'll see you soon.